For technical issue of the week four, we will be covering life cycle costing. The learning outcome is determine the costs and benefits of a product or service using life cycle costing. Well, what is life cycle costing? It's a method of managing costs over the whole of a product or services life cycle from when a feasibility study takes place until after the product has been taken off the market and after sales service and guarantees have finished or expired. This is contrasted with traditional management accounting, which tends to focus on managing costs during the production phase. Life cycle costing focuses over a longer time horizon compared to financial accounting, which focuses on financial performance over specific financial periods. Life cycle costing involves understanding and managing costs, revenue and cash over the life cycle of a product or service. You can see from the yellow line that negative cash flows are normally experienced during the introduction and growth phases. This is due to the high development and costs incurred during these phases. It also takes time before profits and positive cash flows are made. And this could deter investors from investing in new products if the focus is on annual or short-term profit targets. This graph helps us to understand why life cycle costing is important. Let's figure out what it's telling us. The x-axis represents the time from the beginning to the end of a product life cycle. The y-axis reflects the percentage of total life cycle costs that have been committed, which is the red line, as well as the total life cycle costs that have been incurred, which is the gray line. Traditionally, management accountants are more focused on the manufacturing and operations phase, where the major majority of costs are being incurred. And tools such as activity-based costing, budgeting, and variance analysis are used to control costs uh, during this phase. Now, if we consider when costs are being committed, it's often too late for management accountants to make a significant impact on how costs are incurred if they are not involved in the product design and development phase. Therefore, it's important for accountants to get involved in the design stage of new products and services as this is when decisions such as what materials will be used as well as whether manufacturing will take place in-house or be outsourced. So if you ever get the opportunity to be part of a team that is developing a new product or service, jump at the opportunity. As already mentioned, with higher upfront costs, it is important to focus on all costs and revenues over a product's life cycle. Let's look at Foxon's decision to replace production workers with robots. Traditionally, there would have been a high labor costs during the production phase when producing iPhones. Now, using robots will increase upfront production setup costs, but will reduce ongoing labor costs. The decision by Foxon to use robots would have been made when considering the life cycle costs and revenues of the iPhone. It would not have been made with the view to maximizing short-term profits in a given financial year. In the property development sector, where there are very long life cycles and upfront costs are significant, only once all costs and benefits over the life cycle of a building are established, can a decision really be made regarding the construction of, of a new property? Some products have very short life cycles. For example, the average life cycle for a tablet is 5.1 years. Research and development, marketing and production setup costs would be pretty high. It's therefore critical to ensure that forecast revenues over the short product life will be sufficient to make the product viable. Again, hence the importance of life cycle costing for products with short lifespans. Life cycle costing is important in the software development industry. If a life cycle approach is not adopted, many successful software development projects would have been rejected due to high upfront development and marketing costs. There are quite a few benefits of life cycle costing. It provides more focus on the longer term and gives us a better view of the big picture of, of, of a product. It enables greater understanding of product cost and profitability over time or over the, the, the lifespan of the product. And it also enables better cost benefit decisions, especially early on in the life cycle. And it enables better evaluation of management's performance and facilitates rewarding longer term achievements instead of short term profits. A question for the technical issue of the week four. Firstly, provide examples of significant costs that would be incurred early in the life cycle of three different products. Second question. Zero has achieved major success in the Australian, New Zealand, and UK markets, 
and is also growing rapidly in the United States. In spite of becoming market leaders in the cloud accounting market, it has been making huge losses. So discuss how product lifecycle costing may be of use to zero in explaining these losses to their investors or to their shareholders. Mm-hmm.